This should have happened a, a while ago. Uh, this is a manufactured crisis, as the president has said. You just heard from uh, the mayor who was just here at this podium. This is, should have been taken care of by Congress as their constitutional duty a while back. This is not a normal place for us to be, to have, uh, to have House Republicans hold our economy hostage. That is, not a nor that is not the norm. The regular order, as I just stated when Zeke was asking me the question, is that we're supposed to have a conversation about the budget. We're supposed to have a conversation about appropriations. We're not supposed to be here at this moment where we're still waiting for Congress to do something that has been done 60, 78 times since 1960. But we are here in this moment. So what is the level of urgency? To there, is, there is a lot of urgency. Obviously, there is a lot of urgency. We're talking about potentially millions of jobs uh, being threatened because of what House Republicans are doing. We're talking about potential uh, devastation to our retirements account uh, for American families. Uh, so this is an incredibly important point that we're in. That's why the president has used his bully pulpit for the past several months, since February, saying Congress needs to act. Congress needs to move forward. Congress needs to do their constitutional duty. So we're going to continue to do that. I just said three of the four that met with the president on uh, uh, on Tuesday said that default should be off the table. So we're all in on, all on the same place. Uh, it's the speaker that needs to really answer this question. And just a quick follow-up: How worried are you that as we get closer to that date, there will be threats to the economy? We saw back in 2011, just getting close to the X date resulted in a lot of yeah. We are worried. We are very worried. When you think about default could, as I said, 8 million jobs, cause a recession, devastate retirement accounts, increase unemployment by 5%, increase costs for families, halt Social Security, Medicare, veteran care, and all other government payments. Those are the things that could happen if this threat that House Republicans have put forth moves forward. I mean, yes, we are very concerned about this. You're outlining the impacts of a potential default, but at what point should Americans at home start preparing themselves for these impacts? Look, we, we're hoping that it doesn't get to that. We really are. We're, that's why we've been very vocal. The president has been very clear. That's why he had this meeting on Tuesday to be, to be uh, straightforward and frank. You know this president doesn't, is not afraid uh, to be really honest. And, uh, and that's why he went to New York, to speak directly to the American people, to let them know what's at stake. So look, we hope that this is not going to happen. We hope that the speaker agrees with the other three uh, leaders uh, in Congress and take default off the table. Good morning, friends. I have important news to share with you this Saturday. The future of recurring relief payments is changing. Several lawmakers have officially agreed to send out inflation relief checks directly to the residents to help them with the rising cost of living. These payments would equal to thousands of dollars extra every year for many Americans. But the plan has some major drawbacks. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video for all of the details. Please stay tuned because I'll be announcing the winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway. Multiple state governments have recently considered or enacted their own child tax credit nearly two years after an expansion of the federal child tax credit had expired. But while the effort to implement and reinstate the expanded federal credit was led by congressional Democrats and the Biden administration, statewide efforts have been far more bipartisan, with GOP-run states just as likely as Democrat-run ones to enact their own child tax credits. The 2021 expansion of the federal child tax credit lifted millions of children out of poverty in the six months that it was in effect, making it one of the most effective anti-poverty measures in recent memory. That expansion, authorized by the massive relief legislation that passed shortly after President Biden took office, expired at the beginning of 2022. Despite efforts from its supporters in Congress, opposition from all congressional Republicans, and at least one Democrat blocked its reinstatement on a federal level. Aidan Davis, the state policy director at the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy, told reporters that the temporary federal expansion put child tax credits on the map 
as a really meaningful policy. Since 2019, 14 states have introduced legislation to enact state child tax credits. After the expiration of the expanded federal child tax credit in 2022, three states, New Mexico, Vermont, and New Jersey, created new child tax credits to fill the gap. But not all state child tax credits are created equal. New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grissom signed a nearly $1 billion tax package into law, allowing $500 rebates to over 900,000 taxpayers and expanding the state child tax credit. Rebates of $500 for single filers and $1,000 for married couples are expected to be delivered to over 900,000 state taxpayers sometime very soon. According to the governor, expanding the child tax credit will help over 200,000 New Mexico families and broaden successful effort to reduce child poverty rates. Eligible families will be able to claim a larger credit of up to $600 per child after the tax credit was expanded. As of the end of 2022, 10 states had implemented child tax credits. The credit is refundable in nine of these states, meaning that the credit is accessible to households that are too poor to pay income taxes. It is one of the defining features of the federal expansion. Other states, including Connecticut and Rhode Island, had temporary limited policies in 2022. Maryland this week also expanded its initially temporary credit to become permanent. It is clear that times are tough for many American households, and they are only looking to get tougher as a year goes on. However, a proposal from Utah Republican Mitt Romney has resurfaced, and it could bring a new version of the child tax credit into reality. While this is good news, there are some drawbacks to the program that will need to be explored. Mitt Romney's plan, known as the Family Security Act 2.0, builds on a previous bill that the senator introduced in 2019. It was the first ever Republican-sponsored cash child benefit. It would provide parents up to $1,500 a year in monthly cash payments. But the bill that Senator Mitt Romney introduced just recently has some key changes from the 2019 version, and they make a big difference in Mitt Romney's updated Family Security Act 2.0 plan. Families will receive up to $350 per month for children up to age five, and $250 for children age six to 17. But there are some strings attached. One of the biggest factors is that it would exclude the poorest American families and as a deficit neutral plan would do away with existing tax breaks and social spending programs, all of which are designed to assist low-income Americans. This has led to many of his colleagues to oppose this bill. So dear friends, what are your thoughts about Family Security Act 2.0? Well, my awesome and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this morning. Thank you, dear friends, for being here and for being part of this community. The two winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway is Keith White and Donnell Caldwell. Congratulations, my friends. To claim your gift cards, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or you could message me on my Facebook page. Thank you, friends, and have a wonderful and very blessed weekend.